Hi everyone, so my name is Natalie Ramaszewski and as part of our final presentation, I am going to be presenting an article that discusses diversity in the police force and why it matters, um, as well as talking about specifics um, in Fort Worth, Texas, and what exactly they're trying to do to improve diversity and what they're expecting the outcomes are going to be of these efforts. So to give a little bit of background on the idea of diversity in the police force, um, this isn't a new thing, but in the past few years, there has been a lot of attention focused on these claims of racially biased policing, uh, where white officers, usually male, will disproportionately target people of color in their policing strategies, which oftentimes leads to the death of these civilians, which is tragic to say the least. Um, and this has kind of been brought to light through a lot of individual cases, um, which have been kind of tagged as police brutality. So the cases of Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, and so, so many more where people of color have died at the hands of white officers and people are starting to see a pattern here and realizing that there may be things that we can do to fix that. So in order to kind of find the root of this problem, um, people have been looking at the police force itself. And one of the biggest things that keeps popping up in big cities everywhere is that they have police forces that are very unrepresentative of the communities in which they serve. And the article that I chose particularly talks about Fort Worth, Texas. Um, so a lot of these police forces tend to be disproportionately people who are white and people who are male. And this is kind of based on the past employment requirements. So if you recall, when we were reading the section on policing, we learned that early on in the creation of the policing system, only people who were white and male were allowed to join. And this isn't something that gets erased by a law that says, okay, anybody can be a police officer now. It is something that is ingrained in the system and needs to be worked at to, to be fixed. And because of this disproportionately white male population uh, within police forces, there is a high instance of cultural biases that exist. So a lot of people aren't adequately equipped to deal with the different kinds of people that they interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So the article that I chose is titled Why Fort Worth and Other Big Cities Struggle with Police Diversity. It was written by Christopher Connolly um, at the end of last year and it was presented by Kara News. Uh, so it kind of just delves into specifically Fort Worth and shows the statistics of what kinds of people live there versus what kinds of police officers serve there and what are the potential issues for why the police force isn't more diverse. Um, they also talk a lot about the ways in which they are trying to fix the issue, which is really great. The main issue that this article addresses, of course, is that Fort Worth police officers are not representative of their community. So if you take a look at this graph, what it does is it compares the distribution of uh, the different races. Um, you know, we have white, Latino, black, Asian um, between both the Fort Worth PD in 2019 and the city of Fort Worth's population in 2018. Now, these aren't exactly the same year, but they're still pretty close. So it's, it's a good comparison. And what we can see here is kind of troubling. So we have a really high um, instance of white individuals in the Fort Worth Police Department and not that many people of other races. So the 
city of Fort Worth has a population of roughly 40% white individuals, but 65% of the Fort Worth PD is comprised of white individuals, whereas Latino individuals make up almost the same percentage of the Fort Worth population, but the they are less than one third of the um, population of white individuals in the police department. So you can see that there's a huge disparity um, among the type of people who live in Fort Worth versus the type of people who police Fort Worth. So here I have a quote from Mr. Corey Session, who is the vice president of the Innocence Project of Texas, and he sat on the Fort Worth Task Force on Race and Culture. Um, so he says, if you don't have a police force that is represented or looks like your city, you run into issues, cultural issues, biases. We all have prejudices, but for a police officer, these are life and death situations. They can turn on an instant, so you've got to be careful. So what Mr. Session here is talking about is it's not the prejudices that are a part of the police officers that are an issue because every single person on this entire planet has some kind of prejudices. There's, there's nobody that doesn't. The issue becomes when you put somebody who has these prejudices into a life or death situation involving somebody who is the source of that prejudice, who is the target of that prejudice, you get a disproportionate amount of people relating bad with a certain type of person and thinking, okay, you know, I'm in this situation and I have to make a quick snap decision. And if the person is X, Y, and Z, that means that I am going to use deadly force. And it's that categorization um, in such harsh circumstances that becomes the biggest issue. What this article did was it went through the different aspects of the police training and acceptance that could potentially disadvantage certain groups. So in terms of women, women are disadvantaged um, going through policing in terms of physical testing. Oftentimes it's very geared towards men and um, they can struggle with that. Uh, another group that is often disadvantaged um, are people of color. So there are certain written exams for um, police academies that favor white individuals. It's very similar to the way that the SAT functions in that it's not available to everyone. And then people of lower socioeconomic status or who come from certain neighborhoods um, are disadvantaged in the background checks that occur. And obviously we all know that background checks are very important. We wanna make sure that we have police officers who aren't criminals. But as stated in the article, there are areas that are far more heavily policed because of, you know, oh, it's a bad neighborhood or something like that. So people of lower socioeconomic status who can't exactly afford to live in good neighborhoods, whatever that means, um, may struggle with background checks because of the high police traffic in the areas that they grew up in. So you might be asking yourself, well, what's so controversial about diversity in the police force? Why, why would that be a bad thing? So the thing that's controversial about police force diversity is kind of the reasoning behind it. So like I talked about during the background, um, this has kind of been brought to light by the white officers who um, have been disproportionately targeting people of color in recent years. So there are many people who believe that this is racially motivated and they are biased and it's a racist system, but there are also people who simply believe that they're doing what needs to be done and they're doing their job and both of these views are entirely valid. Um, but people can get really heated over the idea that we 
are making the police force more diverse because we want to eliminate that racial element to these cases. Um, and there are a lot of people who might argue that this is, oh, too politically correct. But there are a lot of benefits that come from a diverse police force, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but people could get riled up about it. So what does the news source, uh, Kara News, say about it? Um, they seem pretty unbiased in general, and they discussed a lot of the positive changes to the police force and what they're doing to try and increase the diversity and increase uh, different people applying and joining. Um, so they discussed a police cadet program, which allows uh, younger individuals to kind of get that early step towards joining the police force. Um, they are also providing additional physical training for women so that they're more equipped to handle the physical tests uh, that come with the, the police examination. And a, an increased focus on public service from the people who either already currently work in the police force or the people who are joining recently. So there are two main perspectives that people take when thinking about the idea of diversity in police forces. And the first one is that diversity does not significantly lower police caused killings. And this is true. In communities where the police force is more diverse, there is no significant reduction of police caused killings. However, the other perspective that one can take is that diversity can help improve public relations with the force. And this is also true. Uh, a 2016 report from the Department of Justice suggested after decades of research that increasing diversity in police forces can help improve public relations, uh, increase trust, and increase public safety for everyone. So while these are the two perspectives, there really is no downside to increasing diversity. So now that we've kind of talked about that, we want to address why does it matter? What does diversity even do for the public? There are a lot of perks to diversity. When you increase diversity with gender, so by including more women in the police force, you increase levels of communication between officers, between officers and civilians, etc. And you also decrease the use of force and deadly force at that. When you increase diversity by race or ethnicity, you include more people of color in uh, police forces. You tend to improve workplace happiness and friendliness, which is always a perk, and decrease misconduct complaints. So really, there is no downside to increasing the different types of people who exist in our police forces. And there's a couple implications for increasing the diversity in police forces, um, but most of them I've already talked about. For In the short term, you create a re representative police force. So people who live in the community can look at the police force and see themselves in it, see somebody that looks like them. And in the long term, as the um, Department of Justice report suggested, you increase trust and improve public safety for all those involved. So thank you for listening. Um, I hope you learned something and I uh, just wanted to include the credits for all of my images as well as the citation for the article. It's a really great read if you want to check it out. Thank you.